Hello, I'm Diane Glasgow Watterson, and we're going to talk today about curbing broken and castle appointments. And I'm Linda Miles, and we are here at the Speaking Consulting Network, and I'm delighted to spend some time with Diane so that we can share some great ideas with your, uh, with your practice. First of all, I'd like to talk about things you can do when the patient is actually in the office that are more proactive in helping curb future broken appointments or cancellations. And I think that is at the point of contact when the patient is actually in the office. First of all, if the hygienist are making the patient's next appointment, a six-month appointment, the hygienist needs to be discriminating. In other words, if this patient has had a history of broken and canceled appointments, then the hygienist should not schedule another six-month appointment, uh, but rather give that patient opportunity to be contacted later or call later and make their appointment. Because if somebody's got a history of a lot of broken appointments and cancellations, it's not a really good idea to schedule them six months out. And also to ask the patient um, or to let the patient know that they will be receiving a card, that it's time for them to come in or to call for their appointment. But then to also ask about phone numbers and such if, if the patient has to come back for restorative work after their uh, prophy, and to find out which is the best number to call, what time is the best time or, that they can be reached, and is this voicemail, and to let them know that they will be receiving one courtesy reminder call if they so desire. Okay. And one of my um, most favorite topics to, to speak about is how to discourage that broken appointment that calls and wants to get out of the appointment easily. And I think that if the front desk scheduling coordinator has not been properly trained, there's actually three tones of voices for handling this type of call. So if they have had no training, they usually have heard that the customer, the client, the patient is always right. So they have a neutral response. Oh, okay, Mr. Johnson, um, let me see when I can get you back. And they make it easy. Then in some practices, there's actually a very happy tone. Oh, guess what? talking to the rest of the team. Mr. Phillips' two hours appointment just canceled. We're going to have a long lunch hour today. So the response has sounded happy. No problem, Mr. Phillips. Oh, not at all. So they should never sound happy. They should never sound neutral. There's only one tone of voice, and that is friendly, always, and disappointed as well. So if someone calls to cancel, are you sure you can't be here? I have reserved the doctor's entire late morning just for you. Our dental assistant has everything set up for your uh, crown prep and the lab is coming by at lunchtime to pick it up. So you make them feel guilty in a very friendly way. And so I think that's my biggest pet peeve is they don't know how to discourage it from the onset. I think front desk people sometimes um, don't use good verbal skills with patients and they don't take the time to expand their communication and actually confirming appointments can be um, a negative in that if you say you're calling to confirm that appointment that sounds like we think they're not coming. Mm -hmm. You know, We've got to confirm that they're actually coming. So to say to the patient, would you like to have a courtesy reminder call about your upcoming visit? If the patient says, yes, I would appreciate that, then to say, oh, great, I'll be glad to give you one courtesy reminder call. Now, which number would be the best to call? Mm -hmm. And now a lot of patients want email or text. They really don't want to call, and I have discovered that 40% of the people don't have a home phone, and about 80% of the people that do have a home phone rarely check their messages because anyone that they wish to speak to has their cell number. So getting that information up front, as Diane said, whether it's going to be text, whether it's going to be email confirmation, or whether it's going to be, and to hit on what Diane just mentioned, at the bottom of an appointment card, if it says, if unable to keep this appointment, kindly give us a 24, 48 hour notice, that to me is encouraging them that if anybody makes you a better offer or a better deal, just go ahead and cancel. We don't care. 
So at the bottom of the appointment card, it simply should say, this time has been reserved just for you. Consider this card your confirmation. So when you hand it to them, it's confirmed the first time, and then as Diane said, a courtesy confirmation call is uh, at their discretion. Great information, Linda. So we hope these points will help you curb and cut down on the number of late cancellations and broken appointments in your practice.